at the top here, we have our uh, different sections of the program um, to navigate through, okay. like jobs, sales, assets. So we're just going to start in, um, in jobs and go through each one of these. Um, so if you have any questions, just let me know. Yep. So if we click on dispatch, it'll open up the dispatch uh, schedule. So you can see we have three jobs uh, right here mm -hmm. for, for today. If we double click on one of these, we can open it up. And this has all the job information. So the customer, the contractor that called it in, the times, the job site, pump size requested, estimated yardage, job type, what, what pump's going out, the operator, any extra system. So everything that you would need to enter for a job, right? Um, you can also, some uh, key features here is you can multi-book jobs. So if we click on this multi-book button, we can say, okay, this job is going all next week. And we can quickly assign it to all of next week. There's also some other neat features like texting. So you can text your operators, their job ticket information directly from here. And you can do all of your jobs for the day. And you can also send text to your contractors or your customers requesting uh, job uh, confirmation. So they'll they'll get a text similar to how um, doctors do it. They'll they'll send you a if you have an appointment, they'll send you a text the day before, and you right. can confirm that that you got it. Right. Right. Um, you can also customize this grid so you can move around any columns that you want in the order. Um, that you would like. So you can set your grid up to look however you want. And this can be different for owners, salesmen, dispatchers. Ev everyone can set this up differently. You also have your operators on the left and equipment on the right. And you can drag and drop these onto jobs to schedule them. And they're color coded with uh, green blue and yellow green indicating one they're scheduled on one job for the day blue is two jobs for the day and yellow is three jobs for the day all right um there's lo lots of other things in here as well kind of um small details that we won't get into but you can you can print out your schedule you can view a map with all of your jobs um so you can see there's there's a job over here. Right. And you can also view uh, multiple days at the same time if you would like, and you can put them on on separate separate monitors. So this program has the capability of using upwards of three, four, four monitors pretty easily. Okay. So any questions about dispatch? Is it GPS on the truck so you know where they are? Yeah, and that they will also show up on the map. So if you have GPS on the trucks, they'll show up on this map um, as well as with your jobs. And if your operators are running the mobile app, they'll also show up on, on this map here as well. And the, the nice thing about the, the GPS is it geofences your yard and all of your job sites. And it'll, it'll give you an ETA in a distance of how far they are away from their next destination. And it'll also update the job status to in route on job. So when they leave the yard, it'll update to in route. When they get on the job, it'll it'll say on the job. And same thing for when they're returning and, and get back back to the base. Back to the yard. Okay. And that comes so it would work off their phone as long it, as they got the app on their phone. Yeah, so that that can work based off of the GPS on the truck, or the app on the operator's phone. Well, the trucks don't have GPS. On. Right, but it but it, it could. Um, it, it's an option. It could work based off of our our GPS on, that we can put on the trucks, or based off of the operator's phone. Either or, whichever you prefer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, next is this timeline view. So if we, if we open this up, you can see, um, 
It's just a timeline format of all, all of your jobs. And the, the nice thing about this is you can see where there's gaps in time. So if like these jobs were, were like so, you would you could see that we have about you know two and a half hours of uh, a gap in between right here. Right. So mo most people don't really dispatch based off of this. Um, it's more more people use it more for viewing, uh, viewing their jobs. We also have the summary view, and this is neat if you change it to the month. This is nice because you can see per day and per week your total jobs, how many jobs you haven't in invoiced for yet, your total uh, yardage, and your total hours. And then you have the uh, totals for the entire week on Sunday. So it's especially nice for whoever does billing. They can quickly go back and see if they missed any jobs that they haven't billed for yet. Next is uh, customers. So this is just your customer list. But the nice thing about it is if you click on a customer, you can see all of the jobs that they've done in whatever date range that you choose. And if you select this plus on the left side of the customer, it'll branch out the job sites, their job sites. And if you click on the job sites, it'll list just the pours that you've done for that particular site. So there, you can also view from here, you know, their invoices, payments, open balance items, transactions, etc. You can set up con a contact list for, for them as well. Okay. Uh, so pricing. So how this works is you can set up different price schemes for uh, customers, uh, customer specific or job site specific. And you can see here's all of the all of your different sizes with all of their different pricing for their hourly rate, volume, travel, etc. And so this gets assigned to customers or job sites, and then automatically prices it out for you when whenever you do a job for them. We also have quoting. So how this works is you would add a new quote fill in the blanks, and then you could print out uh, a quote that has has those different rates for your equipment um, and some, some basic customer information or pros prospect information. Any questions so far? No, not yet, no. Okay, uh, so under projects, so you, you can set up uh, projects based on the estimated uh, yardage revenue um, that that you're you're gonna do for that project. So you you would put in the estimated amount of revenue, hours, yards, and then it'll track the progress of that, and you'll be able to see with these percentage bars how far along you are. Right. So this is good for, you know, if you're, if you're going to be going back to, um, you know, one project for an extended amount of time. Sure. Um, under assets fleet. So if, if we click on fleet, this is a list of all of your equipment. And similar to the customers. If you select a particular truck, it'll list you all of their jobs that they've done in whatever date range that you're looking at. And from here, you can also assign which operator um, is, is permanently assigned to that truck. You can have more than one operator assigned to the truck, right? You can, yes. Okay. So you just tag which one's the primary. Or you can tag the primary. With the boxes here? No. <clears throat> well, not all my operators, but on all my operators. Right. 
they were the first one to get on this one. Um, so next is permits and licenses. So you can track basically anything that has an expiration date. So your vehicle registration, driver's licenses, medical cards, DOT permits, anything that expires you can set up here. And it'll give you a, a reminder alert up here at the top, letting you know um, when it needs to be renewed. And you can set uh, when it expires and when you actually want to be reminded on. So you could set that a, a month in advance. So n nice and easy way to track uh, essentially anything that expires. We also have the marketplace. So similar to Amazon, you can type in any part number or any part name and it'll pull up and search for all the different parts listed in the marketplace that you can shop for. So if I were to type in, let's just say one, two, three, four, which is part of a part number, um, here's all the, the pipe and um, ends that, that fit this part number. You can also select a piece of equipment over here. This will list all, all of your equipment. And you can say order system, and you can choose the model type. So I'm just gonna say twin wall 325, and it'll build out a full spec list for this particular piece of, of equipment. So this will have all the elbows, gaskets, seals, um, all, the, all the pipe, everything that you need uh, for a boom kit. And th this- conforms? Yeah, so this right now it's conforms and alliance parts. Um, and this is your negotiated price with the vendor. So we're just the, the platform. They're the ones that are actually utilizing this and selling the parts to you through here. Just like how Amazon works. And then you can also view all of your, your past orders. So you can see everything that you've ever ordered and you know, create, create a history of that. Uh, so under accounting, uh, we have billing. So under billing, this lists every um, job and in, in, in invoice for whatever date range that you're looking at. So the nice thing about this is, is this screen here lists the most amount of information. And you can export any of our grids to Excel. So this screen is a nice way to create uh, custom reports uh, using Excel and extract a lot. You can extract a lot of data through through this section of the program. Do you guys ever direct directly connect to like an accounting program through an API? Um, we don't directly connect with uh, any accounting programs, but what they do, what this is how every pump company in North America is doing it right now, yeah. is they so they do all of their receivables, posting of payments, uh, collections, billing, all of that through our system, and okay. then they do so all their cash in through our system, and then all of their cash out, um, payables, accounts payables, and payroll through QuickBooks, okay. and then they do a journal entry, uh, one once a month or maybe a couple a uh, couple times a month, uh, into QuickBooks, and so they would take this the sales number and the cash receipts. Yep. and do a journal entry into QuickBooks to make sure that everything balances. Interesting. Your average client for this program for pumping, you know, how many pumps do these people have? Um, On average? average, I would say probably like 15 to 20. Okay. T 10 to 20, somewhere around there okay. is average. Okay. Uh, so next is collections. So this is really just used for to see uh, what is currently open uh, and then the aging of those open balances and also uh, printing out and emailing statements. 
So you can see here is everything that is currently open. And there's a lot of lot of data in here. So you can see the 1 to 30, 31 to 60, 61 to 90, and then all the details, each individual item on the right side. Right. And then you could also print out or email statement report directly from here. So you could view or email. Right. Uh, receivables. So you can create payments. So you, you would receive a payment, type in the amount, the check number if you have it, and then you could apply this payment across these uh, all of your open balance invoices. So and you can quickly do this across say uh, they paid you a lump lump sum for multiple different invoices. You could apply them to all of these different invoices uh, qu very quickly and easily. Credit memos is um, essentially works the, in the same same manner, except it's classified as a credit instead of a payment. Right. But mm -hmm. as far as our system works, it's essentially the same thing. You you create it and then apply it towards um, towards yeah, invoices. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can also issue credits, um, like if there's a an overpayment, you can issue a a refund or a credit for that overpayment amount and then apply it to a invoice at a later time. Understood. Yep. You can also do adjustments. So this just lists everything that's currently open. If you wanted to make an adjustment, let's say on this uh, this invoice here, we could just make a balance adjustment, and let's do let's say fifty thousand. Now that's a rather large adjustment, but just for demo purposes. And you can see here, here's our adjustment. Right. So you, you can delete adjustments from here as well and view all of your adjustment history. Uh, there's also finance charges. So you can assess finance charges across uh, your customers or just a, a select few customers. Um, and this is based on off of a percentage. Um, so if, if they're if they're late on their uh, receivables, it, right, right, their receivables on their uh, invoices, then you can assess uh, finance charges across them. Uh, next is human resources employee. So if you click on that, it'll open up. This is just a list of all of your employees. And similarly to the customers and the equipment, if you select an employee, it'll list all of the jobs that they've done in the date range that you're looking at. If we go to clocking, so this will list your um, all of your employees can clock in and clock out from several several different devices, and it'll list all of their clock ins and clock outs here. And this can be used to gather uh, their hours for payroll. You can edit these times as well if you open them up, so you can adjust their clock in and clock out if you need to. Right. And there's Wait, also on this on this program do you um when you buy you, you get everything right like when you, yeah. yeah right yeah it, all all of this that i'm showing you is included um the only thing that's not is the the mobile app is an additional fee okay. um and then the gps okay. and then we also have this Crew Central here. So this will list for each operator. This is just for, for operators um, only. You can see 
basically everything that they did for that day or days. So you can see there what time they clocked in, what time they left the yard, got on the job, arrived, all their different times for the day, and then clocked out. So it's a good. This is a good summary screen to see um, what all of your operators have been doing. Gotcha. And then under reports, report central. So this will list all of the reports in the entire program. So how it works is you have the category and then under the category that you choose, you have all of those different types of reports. So these are all of the sales reports and you can choose summary or detailed. And if we change it to say equipment, these are all of the equipment reports. So one, one of the neat ones here that people like is the size sent versus size requested matrix. So this will tell you essentially how accurately you're utilizing your fleet based on what your customer is requesting and what you're actually sending them. So you can see like this 40 meter was requested a total of one time, one times, and it was sent out once as a 36 meter. Right. Okay. I got a, hmm. I think. Yeah, like 147 hours. Like a utilization chart. Mm -hmm. So there's lots, lots and lots of different reports. Uh, basically, anything that you're looking for is is most likely in here, or has been requested by another pump company to be right. to be put in here. And then there's also other analytical uh, sort of charts and um, line graphs, things like that, that you can run um, here. So lots and lots of different ways that you can analyze your data. This is kind of a, a bad example. Let me see if... This customer should be... A little bit better. Mm, nope, I guess not. This is just our, our demo database, so it's not exactly uh, populated. Yeah, with all the right information. So, right. Um, but that's that's pretty much it. Was there anything else you guys wanted to go over in um, in the dispatching? Oh. We're just doing the dispatching right now. Or any anything in general. Doesn't matter. Well, the maintenance part. Mm -hmm. Is there a spot in there for maintenance? Yes. Yeah, so uh, did I skip over this? I think I did. So how this works is it's broken down into two parts. Current, current maintenance and then future preventative maintenance. So current is anything that you're currently working on right now. And then PMs, future PMs, you can set up based on different parameters that you want to use. So you can use um, at a certain amount of yardage, at a certain amount of miles, hours, or days. So you could say, do an oil change every 10,000 hours. And then it'll track the progress of that here. And you'll be able to see this progression bar. Okay. And then once it hits 100%, what happens is it creates a current maintenance. And then this gets reset back to zero. So it shows up as an alert or a new message up top? Um, yes. And then it also, it also sends... Um, creates a current maintenance and then we're working on making it so that it'll also in the future send out a text or email uh, when one of these get created or if they're at say 95 percent whatever parameter you would like and then this meets the dot standards 
You program in what you need. For a maintenance program? You put in the what you want to meet that standard. Because they're all different. Right. Oh. Yeah, you would you would set those parameters up based on your needs. Just come straight up. You'll see it. You see it? Yeah. 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 Yeah.